Hello and welcome my Tournament of Champion Champions! It's SJB here, and in their last video we went over the Tournament of Champions Round 1 and Round 2, and 37 total towers got eliminated. If you haven't checked out that video, feel free, but here's a quick recap on some of the most interesting and crazy tower changes that have happened for us. First, the True Sun God, one of the most powerful towers in the game, has been eliminated and beaten by the Glaive Lord. One of my favorite towers in the game, the Sky Shredder, surprisingly got beat by the Elite Defender, which is not all that crazy, but I don't know, I want the Sky Shredder to win. And then, unbelievably, Banana Central, a money-making king, is going to take down the Homeland defense. In addition, Cripple Moab, somehow, you guys picked him to beat the legend of the night what is wrong with you i don't know but you did that and with even though it wasn't a big surprise the largest vote difference in the entire round two the entire voting so far balloon solver with 93 percent of the vote is going to beat the special operations in case you're curious what everything looked like so far here's our round one and round two battles you're going to notice that these orange marks are just the uh, uh percentage of their votes uh, the, obviously, it's out of 100, and the higher the vote, the more that you uh, you guys liked that tower in particular. So, um, a lot of crazy, crazy, crazy uh, things that I did not think were going to happen happened. But for the most part, everything did kind of go according to plan. And then once we get down to the very bottom here, you're going to see some of the crazier changes. Bloom Sideration and Glue Storm. Oh, come on. What, what, are, you, what are you guys doing? What are, what are you guys doing? But before we get started, one tower has been revived, has come back from death to fight again in the Tournament of Champions, all based on your guys' vote. And you voted that the Perma Spike deserves to keep fighting on. He must be revived, and he must push on and try to win in the Tournament of Champions. Please don't forget that there are three criteria going into these votes, and they are all based on your guys' votes. You decide every single one of these matchups. And the three uh, things we got to think about are, of course, the fun level, the awesome level, and the efficiency level, which is how good it is for the price that you're paying. Is it getting the right amount of pops through the amount of money you saved up and spent on this tower? And now our first battle of round three has begun. We've got 16 total matchups happening in this round, and 16 towers will be eliminated. First, the Flying Fortress versus the Sentry Champion. And you guys thought the Sentry Champion was overall a very solid tower overall, and it it feels pretty good for the price. But, of course, it doesn't feel that special as a tower. It just kind of does regular old pops in every normal way. Flying Fortress, on the other hand, is absolutely amazing in every single way but money. And with 83% of the vote, the Flying Fortress is not gonna get defeated yet. He must slay on and must keep owning everybody in his path. Next up, we've got the Glaive Lord versus the anti Bloon, And of course, both these guys are really awesome towers. But Glaive Lord, according to you guys, is way more fun to play. He's just satisfying. And he's got a really good cost to pop ratio. He's got a lot going for him. anti Bloon, he's a great tower. But is he fun? Cost is kind of holding him back. He's a pretty expensive tower here. And that's why it's going to go to the Glaive Lord with 70% of the vote. He's going to win this one. Next up, we've got the Wizard Lord Phoenix versus the Elite Sniper. Now, this is a fun one because we've got a lot going for the Elite Sniper. He's got a really cool ability that makes you cash. He pops balloons. He's cost efficient. He's fun to play with. He's got a ton of different synergies he can play around with, and he does basically everything. Wizard Lord Phoenix, on the other hand, is really fun. Pretty, pretty awesome. He's, he's, a, he's, he's a lot of people's favorite tower in the game. And because of that, of course, with all of these bonuses, of course, we've got to give it to... Wait a sec. With, with Wizard Lord Phoenix with 56% of the vote. The, the comments make no sense, but in this one, Wizard Lord Phoenix is just too fun, I guess. And people like him too much. We've got the Apache Prime versus the big freaking laser, the Ray of Doom. Of course, he's a giant freaking laser. I mean, that's pretty cool in itself. He's super powerful. But how useful is he? He's not super duper good late game, super late game, and he's not super duper good until you can afford him, so you don't really have that much time where you can actually use him effectively. So he's also kind of hard to get because of that. And Apache Prime is sometimes, you just, you just love something. You just, you just like something because it's cool. It's also pretty awesome on Chimps mode. He's more versatile than the Ray of Doom because he gets to use uh, stuff kind of all over the map and still has more time to actually 
be used on in most situations, and he's really good for the price. And that's why we've got to give it to Apache Prime with 55% of the vote. A very close battle, but Apache Prime is going to win this one. Oh, look how cute they are staring into each other's eyes. We've got the Perma Brew versus the Cripple Moab. I almost said Stronger Stim for some reason. Don't know why. But the, <laughs> the Cripple Moab is amazing for boss events. He's pretty awesome against the Moabs, and he's obviously significantly cheaper than the Perma Brew. But Perma Brew is just a favorite tower. People like him. He makes so many other towers just that much more powerful, including the Cripple Moab. He's kind of required if you're going to go late game at all. But he does have one issue. Why build a perma brew when you can just build dozens of other stronger stems? And still, the elite sniper must be destroyed. The perma brew is going to win with a whopping 63% of the vote. Next up, we've got two baby boys in here. We've got the Archmage versus the Crossbow Master. Now, the Archmage is generally considered to be more fun. He's also kind of underrated, I guess. Which is weird, because Crossbow Master is also underrated according to these peeps interesting shimmer ability don't forget that he can decamo things in addition to having camera detection which is a very unique uh tower ability for a fifth tier to just randomly gain and he's amazing against moab so targeting is going to be important though crossbow master beloved by many still a dart monkey clearly the best dart monkey the only dart monkey still left of this challenge you can build two of them if you're not playing on chimps which is really 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 cool one of the only fit the only fifth tier tower that can allow yourself to build two of them and he is also of course just gonna be underrated we gotta pick one who's it gonna be and with 60 percent of the vote the Archmage is going to edge this one out. This just has to be a good battle. No matter what, this is one of the top sets of towers that are just fun to use in combination with each other. So when they have to go up against each other, it is tough. But Biggest Bloom, Biggest Bloom, Biggest one is just fun to use. He got a pretty recent buff that's pretty amazing for him. Um, but he is kind of dependent on the map. Do you have the right map to use him on? If not, I don't want to call him useless, but not quite as good. Carpet of the Spikes, on the other hand, is useful in almost every situation. Um, watching the ability just spray out all the time is just satisfying, and timing the ability on top of that is actually really fun as well. He's easily the best Spike Factory path, and he's cheap, he's effective, and even good against Ceramics. He really doesn't have a problem. And that's why Carpet of Spikes with 69% of the vote must still take the win on this one. The big W must go to this guy. And now we begin with the Banana Central versus the Sub Commander. So the Sub Commander is a really interesting tower in the fact that he is actually pretty freaking good. Next up, we've got the Sub Commander versus Banana Central, the money-making king of BTD6. So to start off, I just want to say that people find Banana Central kind of boring. I mean, it's just a moneymaker. That's all it does. It just makes mad, mad money, and it can also help out other banana farms in making that money. But it admittedly is kind of fun to watch the animation of the little, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the little roots of the banana farm, like sucking up banana dirt up and shooting up bananas up into its top little thing. So it's kind of fun to look at, I suppose. But that's kind of all it does. It just makes money. So people don't generally use it every single game because it is so gosh darn expensive. That being said, Sub Commander, on the other hand, requires you to base almost the entirety of your strategy on building subs. And uh, that's also kind of rough because you don't get to always fit as many subs as you want to in the entirety of your map. But he can beat round 63 by himself, which is pretty cool for a $27,000 tower considering he's amazing up until round 80 and he's still okay after you get to round 80. And even though this was a super close battle, the Banana Central only makes money. He can't pop balloons. He must be pooped out. And Sub Commander is going to move on. So if you play BTD6, you probably know the answer to this right here already. We've got Spirit of the Forest versus the Grand Sabo. And I think the first thing to, to, to note about Grand Sabo is that he is one of the only towers in the entire game that can exponentially get stronger the later you go in the game. He is unbelievably powerful at around 200, 300 plus. If you're going late game, he is pretty much a necessity for you. Plus, the design is just kind of fun. He looks kind of cool. He's one of the only towers that's sort of like, it doesn't even really make that much sense, but he's, he's cool looking. But Spirit of the Forest is just the GOAT. He's so good, the greatest of all time. He's ridiculously fun to play with, he's satisfying to watch, he's really good overall, makes you money, and he can pop camos and even help pop DDTs as well. 
Is there really a weakness to Spirit of the Forest? I don't know, but I've yet to see it. Do I even need to say it? 93% of the vote, the Spirit of the Forest said, no, 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 Grand Sabo, get out of my house. Oh my god, look at the fun we're about to have. Now these are some fun towers. We're talking about the primary expertise versus the elite defender. So first of all, the village is just straight up satisfying. Um, having a village pop things in the first place is kind of funny because that's the only upgrade of the entire 15 path that's going to attack at all. Um, it's got godly buffs to make everybody around us that are primary monkeys just extremely, extremely powerful. Um, on top of that, it's kind of dopamine filled because we've just got a lot of weird stuff going on with this guy. Every time we get a buff, we, we just add it to the list. And it's it's kind of sweet. But isn't Sniper just the obvious choice? I mean, he's a sniper. He can hit anywhere on the screen. He's got really fast attack speed. He slows down. So, like, what is, what is his weakness, man? I mean, what, what's going on here? Isn't he just more fun to use because he can go anywhere on the map? One of the only towers, it does not really matter where you put him much. And he's just more efficient. He's cost a little less, and he's going to pop more balloons, right? Coffee cough. I got to admit it. This one makes me a little bit sad. With 69% of the vote, the Elite Defender is going to beat the primary experts what is going on guys what are you doing with these votes i totally disagree but a vote is a vote we must follow democracy another amazingly fun set of towers here we've got the mad versus the extra 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 large trap yes there's three x's there in case you're curious so first of all the extra, extra large trap he's he's fun uh if you play him right and you're willing to micro with him he can be a really weird micro bolt tower which is is kind of unique and fun but that's all he's really got going for him is that he's fun to use he's hard to use but he's fun because of it where the mad honestly not much comments on these guys the mad is just kind of for gamers um it's it's not to it's not to underestimate him at all but he only does one thing he pops moabs and he pops them really really well and if you use your ability you can do mega damage against the moabs and everything around us so um two very unique towers but one must win and with 76 percent of the vote the mad is just gonna womp 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 on that trap there I'm sorry, little trap, but your money-making opportunities are just not enough. Oh, look at these towers. These are so fun. We've got the Inferno Ring versus the Tax Zone. So first of all, these are both just really fun towers to use. There's no argument there. Everybody agrees to that. But the Meteor on the Inferno Ring is just really, really sweet. I want to mention that the, the Meteor did not exist for the entirety of BT6. That was added, I don't know, update like 10 or 12 or something like that. It was added to the game to make it much more interesting. Um, on top of that, Inferno Ring is really, really strong, but is TAC more efficient? Hmm, up for debate, but uh, maybe, depending on the, the buffs and everything. The overall sentiment, though, is that Inferno Ring does a really, really good job by himself, but TAC Zone has just been nerfed and nerfed and nerfed some more, and it makes him a little bit more struggle to use. So I was kind of expecting a little bit more of a close battle, but no, TAC Zone only got 34% of the vote, leaving Inferno Ring with 66% of the vote. What a king! Keep on running with it, Inferno Ring. Keep on running. Now, this is an excellent, excellent matchup. We've got the Pod versus the Carrier Flagship. They're so similar in price, yet they do completely different things. Carrier Flagship is obviously a global tower that you can put things on top of. He's also a water tower here, so he makes things interesting. Pod is just going to be completely different. He just throws balloons out and defends like a boss. He is the probably, if not the best cleanup tower in the game, the second best cleanup tower in the game. So, Flagship here is obviously easier to use. Um, he just got buffed quite a bit lately, so we're definitely into the Flagship here right now, but Pod can just solo entire runs by himself, uh, especially on the easier maps, and I think that is the key fact of him, is that he is just that good and does not let Bloom sneak through, and that's kind of hard to get another tower to do that. So in the end, one of them must win, and this time it's going to be the Prince of Darkness with 68% of the vote. Uh, not as close as I thought it was going to be. Even with that huge care flagship buff, he could not handle the pod. Next up, we got a really fun set of towers, the Pirate Lord versus the Super Mines. I'm kind of sad that these guys are also paired up against each other already, but it's just got to be done. One of them has to be the winner here. So Super Mines. The main thing is, you just can't afford it, but it can solo everything, and that's just straight up insanity. No other tower is going to do what he can do to round 98 here. Uh, it's just it's just crazy. But there is some favoritism in here. Pirate Lord for the price is pretty freaking good. He can solo things. He makes extra cash. He does a lot of other stuff as well. He's just cheese and nuts, bro. What else do you have to say? He's also kind of fun that you could just press one ability, and he just boop. 
insta kills round 80, which is something not an, a lot of other towers can do. That being said, not the closest battle ever, but uh, Pirate Lord is going to edge this one out with 68% of the vote. Supermine is still getting a, a, a reasonable 32%. All right, I like matchups where they usually cost about the same amount of money because you can really kind of compare them in their like total use case scenario. When would you use the Icicle Impale? When would you use the Balloon Solver? And I think I know the answer here, but we got to talk about it. So first of all, Icicle Impale, it's... It's really easy to uh, underestimate its chimp's power. It does a great job slowing down all the balloons in the entire game, but it specifically is amazing against the fast balloons like DDTs. When those guys pop out, he's just going to stun them in their place for pretty much forever, making one of the toughest rounds of the game, round 99, just a freaking breeze, all right? Uh, the Solver. I, I, there's not that much to say about him besides that he just solves all of your issues. Um, he, he kills the balloons, and he kills mobs, and he kills BFBs, and he even do damage against, oh my god, it's like, what is going wrong with this guy? He's good! So, obviously, it's a really, really tough battle here, but we gotta give it to somebody. And Balloon Solver is still gonna knock this one out of the park with 83% of the vote. It's not that Ice Golem Bale is bad, it's that Balloon Solver is just such a rock star right now. And now, this is kind of fun, we have a similar color scheme going on. We've got, uh, BMA versus Balloon Incineration. And I, this is this is a tough one, dude. If you really got to talk about their differences, they are so unique and weird that it is hard to match these guys up against each other. But it's a tough battle, and you're gonna have to give it to somebody, right? So balloon generation is satisfying when you just get rid of every single reinforced balloons, every single reinforced balloon in the game. That's just cool. Shattering shells is also a really good stepping stone to get to this guy. That's something that you kind of have to think about when you're getting a lot of these more expensive fifth tiers. Um, in addition, though, Bloom Master Alchemist, he's got something going for him, and that's the fact that he has fire. Drip. Drip fire? Drip fire? Drip, drip, his drip is fire. I don't know what that means, but not more than one person said it, so I don't know. This can't be bots, can it? I, I hope not, because his drip is fire. I don't know what that means, but I, I, I think we kind of know what it means. It's good, but I don't know exactly the, 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 the words and language that you have to flip and match up together to make that actually make perfect sense to a human being. And that being said, we gotta have somebody win this battle, and BMA is still gonna come out on top. Now, I, I just have to say that I I hate the BMA. He's one of my least favorite towers in the entire game, and I seated him very, very low. And you guys just keep on picking him. How much further is he gonna go? Risen from the ashes, from the grave, a tower that we thought was gone forever has come back to us. Perma Spike was gone in round one. Unfortunately, it was knocked out, but that felt so unfair because he's a pretty reasonable tower. So you guys got to pick, and you guys picked for the Spike Factory, the Perma Spike, to be revived. And now we bring him back against the lowest seated tower so far, and the lowest seated tower for me of course, was going to be that BMA. We just talked about that. So now you guys are going to vote for BMA versus Perma Spike. Talk about an upset. Perma Spike, a wonderful 66% of the vote. BMA is knocked out. Thank you guys so much. I hate BMA. And even though I don't think Perma Spike needs to be on this list right now, I'm glad that BMA is off of it. And that, my friends, is the end of round three. At this point, we've gone through so many towers, so many battles. And we're down to the final 16 towers of the game. More than one, more than three quarters of the entirety of the towers have been deleted, and this is what's left in the next upcoming battles. A lot of really interesting ones that I'm excited for. I still think that I know what's going to happen here, but it's of course all up to you guys to make these final votes happen to see who is the number one best tower in BTD6. And the end of round three is here, and I know it may be sad to see some of your favorite towers in here, but everybody must be deleted at some point, except for one. And that's what we want to try to find out. The best fifth tier tower in all of BTD6. So say goodbye to all these wonderful, wonderful towers. We must move on. For round four, the main thing we're going to focus on is just the towers themselves. How do they compare against each other? What are they useful for? Of course, we got to talk about the fact that they are good. They are awesome and they are fun to use. These are all factors that we have to keep in mind when we're voting for these towers. So let's start off with the Glaive Lord. He's obviously an absolute beast when he comes to bopping balloons, but his big weakness is the big balloons. He can't really do a very good job of them, but big plane is kind of good against everything and your votes is what it all has come down to so who's gonna win this one with a whopping 72 percent of the vote the flying fortress has to win he's just too good it's kind of fun to note 
that all three wizards are still alive in the Tournament of Champions. All three wizards were the only tower to make it with all three of them into round four. The last 16 towers, wizards are just that good. But Apache Prime, can it finally knock out the wizard? Well, of course, we gotta talk about the fact that both of these towers technically have infinite range, which is obviously quite awesome. We've got pretty easy camo detection, and we're just powerful against almost everything. But it's ability versus brute force. Who's gonna win this one? In your guys' eyes, the Apache Prime needs to win it with 65% of the vote. He is too dominant. Now, as it turns out, this is actually a very good combo. We've got the Permabrew versus the Archmage. Now, we've got the king of buffing. If there is a tower that buffs in this game that buffs better than anybody else, it's gotta be Permabrew. That's why he's made it this far in the game. With the recent range buff he got, it makes him even better because he can buff even more towers without having to do any crazy heli pallet action. But Archmage is just good. He pops Moabs like a boss. He's not terrible against ceramics, and if you buff him, it makes him even more powerful, being one of the easiest to buff towers in the entirety of the game. For the price, he's just an efficient, good, and fun tower, right? So who's gonna win this one? With your guys' votes, somebody's gonna win, and it's gotta be the Archmage. With 65% of the vote, he is gonna wipe Permaru out, and it's because Archmage is just an overall fun tower to use, I think. And we've got two kings here. Two amazing towers, but only one can win. The Carpet of Spikes versus the Sub Commander. Now, I want a lot of people to remember that Sub the Carpet of Spikes just got a crazy, crazy, crazy buff, and Ninja Kiwi can still nerf this guy. But as he currently lies, with this current power, is he going to edge out the Sub here? Sub, he's very one-sided. You need to build a lot of subs to make him work, and that is just his biggest limitation, but when you get him, he is powerful, and he's accurate, and having infinite range is a really, really nice addition to your team. But can he really top a, a tower that can pop Moebs like an absolute beast, and still is not bad against all of these ceramics and super ceramics popping out the entirety of the game here? No, he cannot. Carpet of Spikes is going to win this one with a whopping three-fourths of the vote. 75% of you guys said that, yeah, Sub Commander just cannot keep up. One of the fastest shooting towers in the entire game versus one of the fastest attacking towers in the entire game. The Vines are continuously always attacking, always doing something, and always doing damage against these things. Plus, he makes you money and can pay for himself by the end of the game on top of making extra ability money. It's kind of absurd. Can Spirit of the Forest ever actually be topped here? even by something that's just so dominant all the way through round 80 and is one of the cheapest towers in the entire game and easy to afford? Yes, he can. Spirit of the Forest is just going to knock Elite Defender down and poop on his face. With 81% of the vote, Spirit of the Forest has got to take this one. If you truly had to ask me, I would say that these are some of my favorite towers in the game based on pure design. The mad looks freaking cool. The inferring, just melting every single balloon in the entire game with extreme fire is just freaking cool. These guys are cool towers, but which one is your guy's favorite? Which one is more cost efficient, more effective, and more fun to play with? There can only be one here, and it's gonna be the not infernoring. The mad is gonna win this one because he's just too dominant against the Moabs, dude. I cannot believe it though. Infernoring, I thought he should have won it, but you know what? It's not up to me. It's all up to you guys. Next up, we've got the Pirate Lord versus the Pod. P, P, double P. What are we gonna do here? Only one can win, and now every single one of these battles is not just a blowout. It is actually a decision People have to pick which one we have to say no. You are deleted. You are gone. It's upsetting to know it, but Pirate Lord is obviously dominant in every single way. He doesn't have any direct weaknesses. He's just good at everything, but Pod is such a good cleanup tower. Knowing that you cannot let a single bloom sneak through almost at all, if ever, is one of the most amazing facts of life in BTD6 that you can have. Having that safety net is just beautiful. So what did you guys pick on this one? Well, you had to go with the Prince of Darkness with 70% of the vote. Still kind of beating Pirate Lord pretty hard. You guys just love that pod for his dominance. Surprisingly, a decent team. We've got the Bloon Solver and the Perma Spike. Only one can win. The Perma Spike has been revived. He has won multiple battles at this point, but just gonna be straight with you guys. Solver's too OP. He can't compete. Perma Spike 
He's got too many weaknesses now. He's been nerfed too many times, and you can't just solve with him anymore. And it's going to be an easy solver win. And with 79% of the vote, he's going to dominate him. And round five has been initiated. These are your guys' favorite, most awesome, and most efficient towers in the entire game. And let me be honest with you, none of these are a big surprise to me. Every single one of these deserves to be in the final eight. I love all these towers, and I think you guys do too. So I want to know. I want to know your prediction. What do you think will be the top three towers in BTD6? Leave them in the comments below. Uh, I am honestly, honestly curious. And if you want to support me as a creator, make sure you use my creator support code. Make sure you like the video and make sure you're subscribed so you can end up voting for your favorite towers as well. That being said, last thing I'm going to talk about is just the fact that we have an interesting loadout of monkeys left over. We've got only one primary monkey, just the glue gunner, the only one left. We've got only one support monkey, the spactory, the carpet of spikes here. We've got three military monkeys, the mad, the apache prime, and the flying fortress. And then also we've got three magic monkeys, two wizards, which is the only tower to make it with two of the same type of tower into the final eight and the Druid, the Spirit of the Forest. We knew he was going to make it this far, but can he go all the way? Again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you appreciate the amount of effort I put into this, do all those wonderful things for me, and have a super-duper delicious day.